Welcome to another episode of Fill in the Blank. I'm here with special guest, also special cousin. What up? Corey Armbrecht. How you doing? So, Corey, what comes to your mind when I say the microwave auditory effect? You think of Hot Pockets? When you put your ear against a microwave. You know, we used to have a crack in our microwave. So, like, really, nobody really, like, I guess radiation wasn't understood at the time at this age in my youth. And I used to sit there with my head on the counter right in front of the microwave and just watch it. And I might have realized that might have caused some uh, brain damage <laughs> down the road um, now that I think about it. But uh, you basically, when you turn the microwave on, you had to run to the other room because there's a crack in that microwave. You're probably going to get some major radiation effect off of it. Well, the microwave auditory effect, also known as the microwave hearing effect or the Frey effect, consists of the human perception of audible clicks or even speech induced by pulsed or modulated radio frequencies. The communications are generated directly inside the human head without the need of any or receiving electronic device. Interesting. The effect was first reported by persons working in the vicinity of radar transponders during World War II. In 1961, the American neuroscientist Alan H. Frey studied this phenomenon and was the first to publish information on the nature of the microwave auditory effect. The cause is thought to be thermoelectrostatic expansion of portions in the auditory apparatus, although competing theories explain the results of holographic interferometry tests differently. Everything, I understood everything about it until the very end. Yeah, it was a little confusing at the end. Well, that's the best part. We're going to go to the, how the research in the United States is. It's going to take us through a walkthrough from the research in the U.S. Yeah. to the electronic warfare to the conspiracy theories behind it. Actually, the first thing that came to my mind when you said, you know, what comes to your mind is not putting my ear against the microwave. What actually came to my mind was thinking, and this probably has nothing to do with microwaves, but this is what I thought was, um, I've always been able to hear uh a, like a high pitch with electronic devices so like <clears throat> there's like a certain frequency that they definitely give off yeah and it rings in my ears sometimes it's it's not as bad as it used to be when i was younger it was annoying like i could be at the other end of a house and if somebody had a tv on but it was like let's say you know totally blank like if you walked in the room you wouldn't actually know it was on it's just black you know but it, the power is on you can hear it it's just like this or it's like a buzzing, like if the TV's on static or something? Well, if it's on static, for sure. But if it's on, like, just black, like, you know, just no signal at all. But you can still tell it's on. Yeah, from, yeah. like, the other end of the house. I can and they'd be like, too. can you turn off the TV? And they'd be like, it's on. And be like, yes, it is. And then and they'd be like, oh, it is. And they'd turn it off. Well, that's what the microwave auditory effect is, being able to hear those certain radio frequencies. Did you hear about the one famous actress that had metal in her teeth? And she went by some room, and it was, like, a bunch of Chinese people using, um like spies in America that were in this like base that were using uh, Morse code by tapping on a certain thing and her fillings Pick were she up. was picking it up. Wow. So like it's weird to think that like certain frequencies can like attract the metals like that. Like maybe you have a plate in your head and you're slowly hearing like people in China that are mm -hmm. planning a plot against us. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have heard of things along those lines. Like it's, I mean, it's, it's weird because like you got to think that – where when we talk on our phones, it's sending out a frequency, it's sending out a radio signal, it's sending out some type of thing that's transponding a message into space, bouncing from space back to wherever the message is being sent to, whoever you're talking about, someone across the world or something. So there's all these radio frequencies like right now, probably where I'm sitting here and you're sitting there, there's probably a million things from the light giving right. off frequency, from just different types of things that are just going right through us that are in such a... Uh, like unrelevant to our paradox, to our time, to yeah. our us seeing it. But do you think there might be a way of people that are like how some people can hear colors and or not hear mm -hmm. colors, but yeah, like yeah. That, they can hear colors or feel colors. They have and the, they can see like colors yeah. and like not like see colors, but like see like notes and yeah. like sound. They can see sound. Yeah, it's like what different waves and beams like they see it. It's weird to think like that your wires could eat. Are they crossed or are they just like seeing they're unveiling something? Hmm. It's weird to think about. Like kind of like how birds can detect things that we can't or like, like cats do. Like or, or well, I'm saying like, like the magnetosphere or whatever, like, um, or, or yeah, like natural disasters, like dogs who start barking before the earthquakes storm. happen. Yeah. Little Timmy's trapped in a well. You got to find him. Yeah, well, that too, but I'm saying a little bit more you know uh natural disaster type 
Yeah. Or more like an auditory perception. It's like, yeah, some sort of perce- extra perception that we don't have. Like, we don't start freaking out before an earthquake happens, right? Because we don't have that perception that dogs do. Maybe dogs are, it's a hearing thing, you know? Obviously, because they hear better than we do. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's neither of those things and it's something totally different. I'm not sure. But well, some- it goes to the whole idea of, you know, when a dog whistle goes off, mm-hmm. like, why is there a certain pitch that we can't hear, but a dog hears it, like, so bad that it's, like, blood right. it's going to come out of their ears because it's right. so powerful. So, it's really it's really hard to think, like, I, we know their senses are different, and they can hear at different frequencies, but can that be the same with people? I think so. Can I think so, for sure, because, because you know, there's, there's never, like, a 100%. There's always outliers, and... Just like in my case, you know, especially when I was younger, like I heard the TVs that nobody else heard, you know what I mean? Not no, not nobody else, but a bunch of other people did not, it didn't bother them at all, mm-hmm. but it bothered me. So I feel like on that sense, it helps me understand that it's definitely possible for anyone to have some sort of odd perception, you know, ability, I suppose, that isn't standard do you think that that's just be- when you were a young child? You said when this was happening to you. Well, that's when I, I. I mean, I can still do that sometimes. But it's more powerful when you were younger. Mm-hmm. I think that's more because like we are are as we like. If you notice, like a, a kid that goes into a concert, mm-hmm. it's really loud for them because their ears are not used to hearing something that loud. But after or years, they haven't like destroy their inner, exactly. Yeah, it's like once they get older, it becomes like not so loud. And then once you get really old, it's like hard for you to hear even if the music's loud. Yeah, and I've been playing and listening to metal for a very long time. So it's, like, so it's weird to think like that you can have this type of perception ability that you can literally ride it into the ground, like to the point, like it's like your body, you're basically in this temporary thing. So mm-hmm. you got to think, if you don't take care of your vision, you're eventually going to need glasses. But when you're a kid, I'd be like, you're like, you're so fresh into the world, you're so born into like, that the world, mm-hmm. it, you basically when you see your perceptions fail, when you see your body start to fail, it's literally like, wear and tear from the years of life you've spent and i think that's like strange but not to dive into that rabbit hole because we can go down that forever well i'll try not to make this a rabbit hole but like it's it's related to this and that's just actually i actually lost my train of thought where are we going so your brain's already taken a toll from the years it's been on this <laughs> right exactly uh no Shoot. all those ipas already kicking in the brain cells that's it man that's it uh, I think it's the lamp we have on beside oh, you. It's probably sending some type of frequency. It totally is. Um, all right. Oh, see, how do we not branch off too hard? It's just. Now you're staring at a light. Right. Because now I want to talk about that. But did they okay, ever tell right, you right, not here. to stare at the sun? Yeah, but I did. All right. So this is what I was thinking. So with this uh, microwave auditory uh, hallucination type thing. Um, or effect, uh, I was just thinking about how we're moving to higher gigahertz and like, like higher wave band, uh, lengths. And we're about to roll out like 5g across, you know, the U S or whatever. And there's been a lot of like kickback from certain people in the medical field. And they're like, this has dangerous implications. Like like we could literally be like sending everyone into a cancerous state yeah by flooding ourselves with this high frequency radiation we don't know enough about it and like some people are bringing up stuff about like actual effects of these sort of radiations and even wi-fi is known to have effect on trees having tumors well, you know um, about the stuff that's happening about kids um, developing types of like cancers because they're close to living to power lines right, and like exactly. the ability of power lines being able to like imagine a pregnant woman, nine months she spends next to a thing with a faulty power line yeah. and her baby comes out with mental retardation. Yeah. Like you got to think that kids are getting sick, kids are losing brain cells, kids are mentally becoming disabled because of living close to these exposed power lines. Like you don't even realize the whole effect of when you sit next or you put that phone up to the side of your head and you start talking to it. There was a point where the phone was so big that if you kept it up long enough to the side of your head, it was giving off a certain amount of radiation that can expose to your brain. So it goes to the same effects of like this podcast recorder that's sitting in front of me 
what type of frequency is it giving off and it's able to pick up certain frequencies and block out certain frequencies so Correct. why what am i not perceiving that this thing is perceiving more than me well that specifically i mean i'm not entirely sure but like there's like what you said earlier with all these different signals going on around us all the time those are all things we're not perceiving you know you know what i relate to it mm. Is Superman when he became on this earth and he was that kid in the closet. Have you ever seen Superman Returns or whatever it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the mom told him to look through the crowd of all his senses because he said it was too much. He couldn't stop like seeing through walls and everything. And he just like the world was too much. He just locked himself in the closet. Well, his mom was like, search through the crowd like you're a fish. Like just pass through all the people and find me, hear my voice, focus in on that. And that's how we'd be able to came and be able to function on earth at focusing on one thing in front of them at a time. And I believe that's what we try and do a lot of the times. Like sooner or later, you know, you have a refrigerator that's humming. Mm -hmm. Eventually you stop hearing the hum because right. you get so toned down to it and so used to it. It just, you completely ignore it and shut it out of your mind. You don't even think it's humming anymore. And then you, someone comes in the house and brings it back up and then your brain totally starts thinking about it again. So I wonder what would happen if you brought Let's just say somebody who's a little sensitive to those things. Let's say if you brought somebody like that who's never been, like they lived 30, 40 years in complete isolation of any sort of, any sort of signal, right? But they were also a sensitive type person. I wonder what would happen if you were just to like throw them into every day, like right where we're sitting right now, you know? If you threw got, them into New York. Wi-Fi signals, electrical signals, satellite signals, Electrical, this and that, all that. I wonder if they would be like kind of tweaking out, being like feeling weird. It's or the, the same thing when someone that finally, like when the people start to see color, like they put on the glasses that make them not colorblind anymore, that lets them be able to see colors. They're like blown away because they're getting all these new color senses. Things are slowly coming from grays to color. And it's like, so it's like someone just switched your black and white television for a color television. Like they're getting so much information that's trying to be processed at one time. It's too much to handle sometimes. Like you've seen people, they get those glasses, they take them off after five minutes because mm -hmm. it is literally too much for their brains to comprehend. Hand. Have you, uh, you have, have your, has your hand ever hurt while holding your phone or not hurt, but felt uncomfortable? Yeah. Like what? Okay. When I say that, like, because it feels like it's, I don't know, like you're getting something from your phone. Like I've had to put my phone down, maybe not this model per se, but like, like definitely I remember other older phones, like it would almost bother me. Um, like, it felt like more than heat. It felt, like, irritating. And sometimes I'd have to put my phone down. And uh, I know other people who are like that. Um, I Two things there. One, there's some new phone that's coming out. And I was reading the specs about it. Oh, this would be a perfect example. But it had something to do with the architecture of the phone. Like, where they laid out, like, there's, like, four antennas in the phone right? Like this phone probably has two antennas, your probably has two or four or something like that. But like they have them in different spots, but they, they mention moving one of the main antennas to not be where your fingers would most likely be. And it's not due to it being like blocked or anything like that. It has everything to do with it being like, that's the highest radiation location on the phone. And it's like, well, what does that mean exactly? And why did why did you feel the need to... Do you think that's what caused early arthritis in some people's hands? It's possible. Well, let's get to some research in the United States on the microwave auditory effect. Well, Alan H. Frey was the first American to publish on the microwave auditory effect. Frey's human auditory system response to modulated electromagnetic energy appeared in the Journal of Applied Physiology psychology in 1961 and his experiments the subjects were discovered to be able to hear appropriately pulsed microwave radiation from a distance of a few inches to hundreds of feet from the transmitter in phrase test a uh, repetition rate of 50 hertz was used with pulse uh, width between 10 to 70 microseconds now that's that's low i mean 50 hertz is that's a that's a low wave band, right? I mean, so would that be good for someone that could hear that, or is that like loud enough for 
Is it the lower you go, the louder it would be for people to actually, be able to hear? Actually, like a dog whistle, the lower you go, um, the the like the deeper it is, the more people can hear it. But the higher you go in frequency, it's really hard for people to hear. Right. I shoot. We should look up what the. I'm going to do that. You keep talking. I'm going to look up the range of human hearing if it's not in there because I feel like. Well, the perceived loudness was found to be linked to the peak power density instead of average power density at 1.245 gigahertz. The peak power density for perception was below um, 80 megawatts or centimeters squared. According to Frey, the induced sounds were described as a buzz, as a buzz clicking hiss or knocky, depending on several transmitter parameters parameters pulse width and pulse repetition rate by changing transmitter parameters Frey was able to induce the perception of severe buffeting of the head without such apparent vestibular symptoms as dizziness or nausea other trans transmitter parameters introduced a pins and needles sensation Frey experimented with nerve deaf subjects and speculated that human detecting mechanism was in the co coecula but at the time of the experiment, the results were inconclusive due to factors such as tinnitus. Okay, here's a, here's a little factoid. All right, so the human hearing frequency range. Low frequency sounds can be harmful. Human beings are normally able to detect sounds in the range of 20 to 20,000 hertz. So you said 50 hertz? 50 to 70. Okay. But that's like the low, that's the low, just near the lowest range of what we're even able to hear audibly. And then it also says, and it is well known that sounds within this range can damage the hearing, right? So you like, you go to a concert or like you're in war or something like that. All those are within the 20 to 20,000 Hertz range. It's just the decibel level that can like blow your eardrums out. But it says, however, Sounds under the frequency of 20 hertz can also affect the ear, even though we're unable to hear them. So that's really interesting. You could like go. Do you think that's from... why sometimes you randomly get dizzy and nausea? Because he said that he had this at such a low level, but he was able to avoid the symptoms that the, the patients were experiencing of dizziness and nausea. But he did say some were hearing um, like deaf people. He used it on deaf people. They were feeling a pins and needles type feeling. You know that thing when your arm falls asleep yeah, or something, yeah. that pins and needles feeling? They were hearing that from people that were deaf. Weird. So that's weird that it's at a frequency that even if they're deaf, they can still hear it. Well, it doesn't sound like they're hearing it. It sounds like they're feeling it. Yeah, well, it's, pins it's, and needles. it's the whole like point. It's a... The whole point was that if, it, if you are around a certain frequency for long enough, when does it start giving your body symptoms like having dizziness and nausea, like patients that could hear starting to develop uh, dizziness and nausea? What's the brown note? Do you know what frequency that is? That's a note that makes you shit yourself. No, no, I know, but I'm saying, do you know what frequency that is? I don't know. Please don't play. I don't feel like crapping my brains right <laughs> I now. I think it has to be played at an absurd decibel to do it. Um, brown note frequency. Well, let's talk about auditory sensations of clicking or buzzing have been reported by some workers at the modern day microwave transmitting sites that emit pulsed microwave radiation. Auditory response to transmitted frequencies from approximately 200 megahertz to at least 3 gigahertz has been reported. The cause is thought to be thermoelastic expansion of portions of auditory apparatus and the generally accepted mechanism is rapid but minuscule in the range of 10, negative 5, cellulites heating of brain by each pulse what was that negative five what 10 ne negative i think it's 10 to the negative fifth power okay um ce celsius so it'd be 50 celsius or be no it's like five thousand oh, it's what? 10 times 10 times 10 times yeah, 10 yeah. times yeah. 10 five times wow i'm not good at math i that's took right. algebra three three times so. <laughs> that's right yeah, that's crazy. But I took algebra three times? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The resulting pressure wave traveling through the skull to the coica is exactly 10 to the negative fifth power Celsius. The coica is your hearing. What are they saying? Hang on. I guess there's something I'm missing here. Okay. What are they saying about so, temperature? What does temperature have to do with it? The cause is thought to be thermoelastic expansion of portions of auditory apparatus. And the generally accepted mechanism is rapid. Parenthesis. 
but minuscule in the range of negative or of 10 to the negative fifth power Celsius okay. heating of brain by each pulse and the resulting pressure wave traveling through the skull to the coecula. Mm -hmm. So that a certain frequency gets played. It can, your brain, the way it perceives it is by giving off a certain frequency or heat to a certain part in your brain to be able to hear these things. Like that's how they're thinking that the effect gets driven. Oh, I was thinking like it was actually causing some sort of thermal reaction. In the it's air. more like the chemical reaction in your brain okay is experiencing they can relate it to being 10 to the negative fifth power celsius interesting i almost like, like basically lost on that That's... basically like when they burn information in your mind like your mind's like if you think about every word i've ever said mm -hmm. is being just burned into your memory that's how they're kind of thinking of it like a certain frequency burning into your hearing got it you got to think though the louder sounds play if we think of how it destroys like loud sounds can destroy your hearing is it just burning away the nerves in your ears well, I think it damages the cochlea or whatever the or not that the uh what's what's all the little hairs called? Is that cochlea? I don't think that's it. No, that's um You have Google. Use Google. That's true. But I thought it was the little tiny hairs within your eardrum that like can either break off or like something like that. I don't have ear hair. Because it oh we all do. No. I shave it. I don't think you do. An article by a neuropsychologist Don Justine discussing radiation effects on human perceptions referred to an experiment by Joseph Sharp and Mark Grove at the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, during which Sharp and Grove reportedly were able to recognize nine out of ten words transmitted by voice modulated microwaves. Since the radiation levels approached the then current 10 megawatts or centimeters squared, Limit of safe exposure, critics have observed that under such conditions, brain damage from thermal effects of high power microwave radiation would occur, and there was no conclusive evidence for MAE at lower energy densities. So, the whole idea that the radiation sent off from microwaves gives off at a 10 to the negative fifth power frequency, and it, that can cause damage to your cochlea. That's nuts. Um, yeah, so the hairs aren't called cochlea, they're within the cochlea. I actually haven't found the, uh, the word for the hair, but the inner ear is shaped like a snail and is also called the cochlea. Inside the cochlea, there are thousands of tiny hair cells, hair cells that change the vibrations of sound into electrical signals that are sent to the brain, sent to the brain through the hearing nerve. The brain then tells you what you are hearing as a sound and what that sound is. Same reason why we have sensors at the end of our fingertips and in our hands. So mm -hmm. when we feel things, it's, it senses and sends an impulse to our brain to know what that impulse is. And that's when we talk about when people's wires get crossed and like a good sensation can be a bad sensation, a bad yep. sensation can be a good sensation. How far until you can accidentally burn the cochlea in your ears to the point where good frequencies are you might be able to not hear certain frequencies. Maybe that's why people need hearing aids. I think so. I mean, like you, you hear about people who listen to loud music or they, you know, they're on a construction crew their whole life or something, you know, using jackhammers without hearing um, earbuds and, you know, protection for and they ears. can't hear anything anymore. Um, well, that's why you see people that go to concerts and they have headphones on yeah, because they're like, smart. they're protecting their ears. You think of it as them being nerdy, but really they're protecting their cochlea. Yeah. So let's talk about electronic warfare. In 2003 to 04, Wave Band Corp had a contract from the U.S. Navy for design of an MAE system they called Medusa, which is known as the Mob Excess Deterrent Using Silent Audio. This was invented to temporarily incapacitate personnel through remote application. Reportedly, Sierra Nevada Corporation took over the contract from Waveband. Experts such as Kenneth Foster, a University of Pennsylvania bioengineering professor who published research on the microwave auditory effect in 1974, have discounted the effectiveness of the proposed device. I wonder if we could talk to that guy. 
He should be still be alive. That'd be cool. Foster said that because of human biophysics, the device would kill you well before you were bothered by the noise. According to former professor at the University of Washington, Bill Guy, there's a misunderstanding by the public and even some scientists about the auditory effect. And there couldn't possibly be a hazard from the sound because the heat would get you first. So the heat that's coming off like a microwave or some type of device that you can use for electronic warfare like they're doing, the heat would kill you before the sound would actually kill you. Yeah, it sounds like it's more like a heat rate, a thermal radiation Yeah. versus... Okay, all right. Isn't it weird how there's all these different types of frequencies that we're totally uneven, like, aware of? I suppose it's weird. I mean, I... I mean, you're giving off a frequency right now by just... By, like, you're giving off multiple frequencies, not just by just talking, by blinking. Like, mm -hmm. there's a certain frequency that's going off by just you blinking. I've actually thought about this. Uh, all right, so everyone probably gives off their own, like, very, very specific resolution frequency everyone would be very like specific and with with sound and audio when you have let's say you have one wave that's making a sound if you make an opposite wave which i should know what that actual term is i can find that up but it, you can if you make it the exact opposite it totally cancels it out like completely and I think that applies to quite a few things. I, I'm guessing like you could do that with electricity or, you know, microwaves and things like that. As long as you're, you're sending like the exact opposite signal, you could cancel it out. So something I've thought about before was if you weaponize that, if you were able to have some sort of, I don't know how you would do it. You'd have to have some sort of like sensor that could detect what each person's frequency is right and like to do that on the level of like the difference between you and me we'd have to go to like i don't know like 30 decimals out you know what i mean like yeah like it'd have to be something very high resolution in order to like differentiate person to person but i feel like if you weaponize that, let's say, you know, you did it through a satellite or just some big gun near a person, whatever, and you were able to know what their frequency was, you shoot this opposite frequency at them, and I wonder if they would just completely dissolve, like, into oblivion. Well, microwave effects have been discovered as a possible source of the otherwise unexplained illnesses of U.S. diplomats in Cuba and China, occupying in 2017 and 2018. Though the possibility has been discounted by numerous experts, for example, bioengineer Kenneth R. Foster noted of the health effects observed in the diplomats, it's crazy, but it's sure as heck not microwaves. High-pitched sounds by crickets have been proposed as an explanation as their calls match recorded sound patterns. Dude, I remember that. I remember when that happened. It's really... Do you remember that? That seems like an excuse or a cover. That does seem like a cover. That, that freaking does. grasshoppers Bullshit. over some microwave no it was it was different diplomats in different locations so they all got affected by the same grasshopper yeah bs it was like it was definitely they were getting like screwed with somehow i wonder if that was yo i wonder if that was microwave auditory like you're telling me you get aids and you figured out the last person you banged was charlie sheen you're going to narrow it down to Charlie Sheen gave you AIDS. Like, come on. What is... I, I didn't catch the connection there. Well, it's like the whole idea. These diplomats got... Oh, right, right. So it's obviously not the grasshopper. It's the one microwave thing or the thing that they were exposed to. Right, there's something a little it. bit different going on than... Yeah, yeah a cricket. That's definitely a government cover-up. Mm -hmm. So conspiracy theories, numerous individuals suffering from auditory hallucinations, delusional, uh, delusional disorders, or other mental illnesses have claimed that the government agents use forms of mind control technologies based on microwave signals to transmit sounds and thoughts into their heads as a form of electronic harassment, referring to the alleged technology as voice to skull or V2K. There are extensive online support networks and numerous websites maintained by people fearing mind control. California psychiatrist Alan 
Drucker has identified evidence of delusional disorders on many of these websites and other psychologists are divided over whether such sites reinforce mental troubles or act as a form of group social support. Psychologists have identified many examples of people reporting mind control experiences, MCEs, on self-published web pages that are highly likely to be influenced by delusional beliefs. Common themes include bad guys using psychotronics and microwaves, frequent mentions of the CIA's MK Ultra project, and frequent citing of a specific paper entitled Human Auditory System Response to Modulated Electromagnetic Energy. Um, this, this is also an article that's linked to... Um, electronic harassment do you ever believe like i mean it's not hard to think that some person could find a frequency that could piss somebody off that they couldn't hear but that person could hear but it would be really death defying for that person to hear totally i mean how many times have you sat there like ah what's that pitch noise like mm -hmm. yeah you know it's yeah, a yeah. weird frequency you picked up and everyone else is kind of sitting there like what are you talking about you're like it's someone's like got to shut something like off minute. like yeah. you got to sit there like it's a high ping yeah and then it just randomly stops you think the government is like slowly targeting us? Like maybe they're not, trying to kill off a certain m m amount of the population. When I have those happen, which are much more frequent than like just hearing a TV or something, um, I think that's just like my ears kind of popping or like, or maybe somebody turned on some sort of electronic device, but it never has been, whenever that happens, I guess I've never felt like it was anything, you know, I think it's the government and that. slowly killing you. But you got to think, when you go to the airport and you have to walk through those metal detectors or those things that use radiation on you to scan something, well, that's what a metal detector does, use radiation. And it's the whole fact, like, they're slowly cooking you at the airport. <laughs> you ever heard about the red eye? You know, the red eye plane flight? Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the less radiation, though, but the reason why they don't like flying, like, when the sun's up or something like that is because you're exposed to more radiation because you're, like, above where the atmosphere is, you're where it's highest that at when you're flying hmm. so it's like getting like 10 chest x-rays when you're flying up on the red eye like because you know i'm the, curious about you know that. the moon I, I would have to fact check that one but that's an interesting that's something alex jones brought up so i'd probably definitely fact check <laughs> right, it. Yeah. but he talks about the um the moon is red okay when it rises and that's just the way we're perceiving it through the atmosphere right but then when it gets all the way up into the sky it's white right so it's 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 weird to think that when you're flying on that plane and the sun's coming up, it's like getting an X-ray because you're seeing it through a type of atmosphere that's more exposed than when it's got at it. full light. Got it. That's okay. what it's talking about. All right. Okay. That's not hard to believe. No, I, I could buy something like that. And that's when they talk about when they went to space and they were up there, like the amount of radiation that like yeah. Neil Armstrong and all that, where they were exposed to up there. It's hard to think like that didn't definitely uh, didn't affect them when they came back down. For sure. When astronauts spend so much time into space, it's the same thing if you spend too much time underwater. They're getting cosmic radiation. Well, when you spend too much time under the water, you get what's called the bends and you have to sit yeah. in a chamber and depressurize. It's the same thing when they come back from space. They have to repressurize themselves because their gravity they were weightless up there well bends also happens not just from being underwater too long okay maybe i should fact check myself here but i'm pretty sure it also has something to do with how fast you rise up out of the water or something like that right that is from deep blue sea that you're talking about when the guys were um stuck in the underwater base at the bottom and they had to all swim up and the guy couldn't swim too fast or his legs would explode because of the air what happens is your body has air bubbles in it a lot like that's when you can like crack your hands and pop your knuckles and all that type of stuff well if you, the, the air can pop and it can pop too because it's expanding as you're going up and... yeah so it can pop like a bubble can pop or like a candy can pop in a a wrapper like a reese's pieces when i crush it or something like it can it can pop. I think it's why you're not supposed to hold your breath when you go back up from deep water. You're supposed to, like, breathe out. Yeah, because you don't want that in there because that can explode your lungs. Right, something like that. Yeah. It's 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 difficult to think because if you got to think, like, if we're heading down to the ocean floor and those people spend so much time down there and they have to sit in a chamber and depressurize, like, that's crazy to think because if you go too fast, too quick, your eyes can pop out of your head. Like, it's just weird to think that you can hold this tiny amount of oxygen that can just expand. It's the same thing. You yeah. can, the easiest way for someone else besides us that's already kind of perceiving it to be able to understand it is if you think about if you inflate your car tires and then the sun heats it up and the heat expands it, bam, and your tires pop. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you know, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it, and the cold does that too, right? So yep. it's like... Yep. 
you gotta really think, man. Like you don't want to put too much air in. You also don't want to have a, air in your, this type of air in your body because it could explode and pop. So when it comes to the microwave auditory effect, what's your takeaway from it? Do you believe that the government has definitely used the type of warfare weapon to use for the microwave auditory effect, like being able to use radiation or some type of sound frequency that to, can make somebody sick or cause someone to be unwell? Definitely. Um, you know, we didn't really talk about too much, but the brown, the brown note or whatever, you know, and even though, you know, myth, Mythbusters didn't prove that it exists, that doesn't mean anything to me because they, they aren't spending a hundred million dollars on this technology. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty positive. All that sort of stuff has been weaponized. I remember reading some paper, I was in like high school mm -hmm. and it was about changing people's it was uh used in a university and it was about changing people's direction walking direction through the use of some sort of transmission and i can't say that this is audio but then again microwave is an audio either we're talking about Halluc audio hallucinations by the person. Yeah. We're not shooting audio at them, we're shooting microwaves at them. But I remember seeing something about, it had to do with more like, uh, it was more along the lines of like a mind control thing. So I'm guessing they're using a, a different type of, you know, wave or things like that. But what they did is they had kids walking across campus or whatever, and they were able to affect like if they wanted them to not walk in the middle of this area in campus or not. And just by like pointing and shooting this thing at people and then just watching what they did. And I haven't really seen much on that in like 10 years. I would like to look that up again. Well, the hearing of microwave pulses by humans and animals affects mechanism and threshold. So the hearing of microwave pulses is the unique exception to the airborne or bone conducted sound energy normally accounted in the human auditory perception. So being able to hear frequencies in your bones. Have you ever heard the farmer bring up the term like, there's a storm coming because mm -hmm. I can feel it in my knees. Yep, yep. Like, is that a, is that a real thing? Like we even think about it now that we're talking about frequencies. Is yeah. that a type of frequencies your bones can sense? I've witnessed and I felt myself when my dad played drums on stage and he's hitting the notes so hard. I can feel it rab, like, like reverberate in your body. Yes. Yeah. Like come through my, into my ribs and everything. Mm -hmm. Like, is I that actually, a sense? I like that feeling. Um, it, it's definitely, I mean, but it's like a massage chair for your insides. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it's definitely been and still is being, you know, used or developed. So the whole idea of, of being by your co your whatever it is. Cochlea. Cochlear. Mm -hmm. Um by your your cochlear reactions are actually um, when they are received like in the receptors of your inner ear, it's bone conduction. It's actually like a thermoelastic wave of acoustic pressure that travels by bone conduction to the inner ear. Okay. Okay. There it activates the coicular receptors via the same process involved for normal hearing. Aside from tissue heating, Microwave auditory effect is the most widely accepted biological effect of microwave radiation with a known mechanism of interaction, the electrostatic theory. The phenomenon mechanism, power requirement, pressure altitude, and auditory thresholds of microwave hearing are discussed in this paper. So, reading this little article on... Yeah, I want to check out that paper later. It, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's nuts to think that, like, your microwave, the radiation from it can send out a certain micro like a pulse that can actually deteriorate your hearing and it's it was weird because we don't perceptualize it like we don't see it yeah like, or hear we it. don't even notice it well in this paper they do but yeah they did say somebody like could be affected without even hearing it like you could lose hearing and it's not even audible to you i think that's an interesting and kind of scary idea so when it comes down to picking up impulses and picking up pulses of the world, is it better that we're closed off to all these dangerous ones and we're just not aware of the damage it's doing? Or do you believe like we, it, what would happen if we would be able to be focused in on all of them? Would that make us a super being or what? Hmm. I feel like that'd be more detrimental than helpful. Probably. It's almost like, you know, 
when you do too many things at once, you're not actually getting anything done. Well, if you're focused on everything that can go wrong, you're never going to have a successful and happy life if you're just constantly worried all the time. Yep. Also, we wouldn't have the progress that we have right now. Well, define progress, but we wouldn't have the progress we ha- would have right now. Trump's in office. We're doing if, fine. Yeah, if we knew, if we knew the entirety of the health effects of these types of radiations, because like that, you know, they have all these frequencies. You know how like there's there's certain bands for for different things like okay i should just look it up but like, i know you're talking about 80 hertz and all those t- t- different types of frequencies i get you but it's like but it's more like um there's international standards that essentially say like okay between 10 gigahertz and 12 gigahertz this is going to be nautical radio so this is all ships okay and from i I really should know these frequencies from you know 16 gigahertz to 20 gigahertz is airplane is all is all airplane stuff from you know 10 to 12 is all all emergency services this one's space channels right and these ones are military frequency only and you can tune to those but yeah they might be encrypted or whatever but like they, we have these international standards of like this section of wavelengths are reserved for the, these types of radio channels, like like I just said. So, I mean, I got a really easy way of explaining what you're saying for other people, and I just realized it because I use this at work. Walkie-talkie radios, right? They're giving off different frequencies. Channel one, channel two, channel three. They're all just different frequencies that. But the weird yes. thing is... But they're only within a certain You band. can't hear them. But the idea that someone can... A, a little device in your pocket is able to pick up those frequencies and, and be able to it. project it so you can hear it. Mm-hmm. The same thing you accidentally... When you're on the radio and you drive by and you accidentally pick up a cross of a section of like a walkie-talkie radio or something like weird like you pick up a weird frequency of like mm-hmm. a truck driver or something like yes. yeah turns in about a gas station there's times that you can be on a walkie talkie it depends on which kind it is and you can accidentally it's happened before like you'll be like you know just playing with a radio and somebody will get on there and be like yo this is this is a channel reserved for the coast guard yeah, yeah, yeah i've done on. that multiple times and you're like whoops you know if you do channel um i think it's uh, three, two, some channel thirty two or channel thirty six, um, on the water. It's uh the DNR people. Right, exactly. So there's there's reserved areas for those things. Um, hmm. When in doubt, shoot up a flare. <laughs> Everyone comes when you shoot up a flare because either you're there to party or you're in danger. <laughs> But it's, it's just really crazy to think that there's all these different frequencies and it goes to the same aspect as you ever heard of someone trying to communicate with ghosts and instead of trying to reach onto a frequency where they use their body as like a, a radio, yeah. they set like a baby monitor down and have that pick up a ghost frequency that's on a whole nother spectrum. Yeah, I think that's a good, a good attempt. It's, it's, it's a, the whole idea of that. And it's, it's really crazy to think that, you know, there's all these, when we think about all these different outlets that people have, like passions and hobbies and thoughts and creative things, we don't even think about the, the total sounds of the world that go around among us that we can hear, that we can perceive and can't perceive. So really just take the time to look out into the world and try and perceive like just open up your eyes like what's the true meaning of opening your eyes but you can't but see that's the thing like you can open your eyes you can open your ears you can do all sorts of things but you're never going to be able to actually hear or see anything outside of your just own. stock your house with baby monitors <laughs> start <laughs> seancing the dead but you know it's infant it's like what am i saying there? infinitesimal yeah i just don't know if that's the actual right application but like the division between wavelengths is incomprehensible. Yeah, it's in, it's infinite. Like, you know, you can always divide further and 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 further, further. It never ends. You can always keep going. And I don't know. I don't know. It bap- it, it's something that we might not fully be able to understand. Oh, yeah, that. so I guess what I was trying to say was like you could you could buy 
an infinite amount of baby monitors, but you would never cover everything. You know Every broadband network. Right. Like, we're talking about 20,000 Everybody's kilohertz. on their own server, bro. <laughs> it, let's just say you wanted to cover human hearing, right? And we're only going to go in one gigahertz or one hertz increments. So it said human hearing is from 20 hertz to 20,000 20, hertz, right? Yeah. So that means... You need to buy a shit ton of baby reviews. You got to buy 19,980 baby monitors if you're going in one gigahertz. It's okay. I won the Powerball. <laughs> there you go. And you'd have to, you know, set each one up or whatever. But, yeah, we're, you know, we're never going to be able to perceive all that. You just got to find the frequencies that you're that you like the most, like the sports channel and just kind of, mm -hmm. it's like you have your car set to a certain preset on radios. That's your favorite stations and stuff. So as long as you can, it's like narrowing it down. So I think that's like a good aspect you should take in the life is narrow it down. Yo, you know what the Schumann frequency is? No. Okay. It's like the frequency of the earth, mm -hmm. um, that the earth gives off. And we monitor it like all the time. I guess it's slowly changing over time. But um, actually, I don't know. Is it 528 kilohertz? That's the Schumann frequency. Anyways, anyways, you could like, I wonder if you could literally like dissolve the frequency of the earth or what that would do to the earth. Like, let's say. Let's say you did the exact opposite wave, you know, and you shot it at the earth, whatever the frequency of the earth is giving off, right? You shot this thing, you know, whatever is powerful enough to be the opposite wavelength. What would happen? Would the earth just stop giving off this frequency? And what does that even mean? Or would it just the entire earth dissolve? Like, That's dissolve? some freaking Dr. Evil shit, I man. You're talking about happened. like masterminding to stop the... You're gonna end the world, man. You're gonna start the apocalypse with that shit. Well, I'm just curious, like what? If you think like if you mess with anything that happens to do with the Earth's frequency or rotation, you're kind of screwing overall life on it. Right. They always they say that the, the meteor that the the Earth was hit by a meteor that killed the dinosaurs or whatever. They said that there was a ringing for a million years after it happened. So a ringing, a ringing, like a slight just do. So you got to think. Is that ringing still going on, but it's at such a different frequency now, like that we don't hear it anymore? Oh, that's really interesting. Like, is it still kind of ringing just a little bit? Because it got literally hit so hard it cracked. Like a bell. That's interesting. We cracked the Liberty Bell. Yeah. Well, anybody that wants to look up the microwave auditory effect, it's definitely something that can keep your mind boggled. Um, it's definitely a good read. It's not something I thought at first what it meant i thought it was more about cooking hot pockets i immediately thought of jim gaffigan but it's nice to know that the government's finding a way that to use uh, our microwaves against us well i feel like my dollar tree already does that with those microwave chicken sandwiches and taquitos <laughs> i always get yeah so you I'm don't even need a for it later. microwave attack from outside you can just eat one of those and you'll be dead <laughs> well thanks for being on this episode and stay tuned for the next episode later